I'm Dirk Hagedorn with Avid at ProLight & Sound 2013. I'm here with Placebo Front of House Engineer Ian Nelson, who is uh, helping us out at the show. Uh, nice to see you. So, Ian, you've been a long-time uh, venue user uh, since, since the early days, I think. Uh, you know, how long has it been? Uh, I started mixing with it in 2005, so I guess we're up to eight years now. You know, so I've been very happy with it in then that, uh, that whole period. You know, it's uh, certainly done what I needed it to do. So you've been an early digital console adopter. Tell us me, you know, about that. Yeah, very much so. I, I, the first digital console I used was probably a DM2000 way back in, I'm going to say, 1999, 2000. Um, and I, I kind of saw a need for somebody that may uh, know how consoles, digital consoles operate that uh, in the future uh, would be quite useful to people who maybe weren't uh, so comfortable and so au fait with digital consoles or making that move from analog to digital. So, I, yeah, I, I took it on very early, very early, I think. <laughs> and so, uh, I, I mean, you've been, uh, you've been the front of house engineer with, with Placebo now for, uh, for quite a while, right? Uh, yeah, know. 2001. Uh, I took over doing front of house. I had been a systems engineer with them for a good about five or six years prior to that. Uh, and I started mixing them in probably February, March 2001. So it's now probably 12 years, yeah. And so what was the transition like from, uh, from mixing on, on analog to, to moving to digital? It certainly took a lot of thinking about. Um, I went from mixing on a heritage to going really straight onto a PM1D certainly in terms of placebo. And yeah, there was a couple of loud moments and a couple of really quiet moments in the first few days of rehearsals when I got on the PM1D, but um, it, it took a few weeks to really kind of find a workflow that worked for me. Um, and the, the, the crazy thing was that when I went back to using an analog console, I actually found it harder to use the analog console than I did to use the digital console once I kind of got comfortable with it. You know, I kept muting channels on the analog console when I went to select things. So what's you know, it's like what's the workflow like now on you know on a venue versus you know versus earlier consoles that you used? Uh, it's much easier. Uh, the, the 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 venue system certainly suits the, the way that I work. Um, and really, from the from day one when I started using it, the the, the, the workflows made sense to me. It, you know. I don't know whether my head's a bit strange in certain ways, but it certainly was a desk I felt comfortable with, really from from day one. Yeah. So what uh, you know, it's like when you go out on tour, what uh, you know, it's like what system are you generally running at at front of house? I have a profile control surface. Um, I have a local rack, uh, and then it's a single stage box system, normally loaded with 48 mic pre's and 48 outputs. Um, we put the 48 outputs in so that we have a number of options to send feeds to broadcast. Uh, our stage box is a 64-way transformer isolated system, but we do have occasions where we need to send two or three full multi-track splits around. So I put 48 outputs in so that I can send direct outs from every channel. And I don't really you know, touch the gains very much because the, um, the show file has been pretty much set up for a good few years now. So they just get a, um, a top of channel direct feed at line level and that keeps everybody happy. Yeah. And uh, you know, and I understand that uh, that uh, Placebo actually owns a, a mixed rack system for their monitors, and and you were explaining that uh, that they actually use that as part of the writing process, which I thought was interesting. Well, tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, we bought the mixed rack probably about three four years ago now, um, and the writing process involves you know both Stefan and Brian have their own studios, so they'll they'll get in there and do some demo work, and then they all come together. At, you know various locations, but the mix rack comes in primarily to to mix the in ears and the monitors that they use when they're rehearsing. But the mix rack is also used as the Pro Tools interface, and they basically just set the Pro Tools machine running uh, so that everything they do when they're in the rehearsal room gets captured. We also um, on the, the on the rare occasion that they sound check because we, we you know we use the the virtual sound check exclusively really and the, the guys love it because it means they don't have to come in and sound check early doors but there are some occasions where they may want to come in and rehearse so you know when we're touring and if you know whenever they're on stage I just hit record on the Pro Tools rig which means everything they do is captured and it's all kind of archived so when they phone me six months later and kind of go do you remember we were kind of in Spain and we did this thing I've got a rough idea of what they want to you know what they want to get yeah very cool, and and uh, you know, and as far as 
um, you know, as far as the actual um, you know, like way that you match up to the album afterwards, I know, are you, you know, are you trying to recreate exactly what they do in the studio or you know, what's your approach as far as using plugins on the system? I really use the plugins um, to solve potential problems that um, you know I, I, I sort of come across. Really, I, I still have a very analog head, and when I'm originally setting the show file up, I still take a very analog approach and try to think how I would do it if I had a heritage and an outboard rack with say eight gates, eight compressors, and three reverbs, and try and not to overcomplicate stuff. But as the you know as the show file develops, uh, maybe sort of starting to find little niggles with you know maybe changing from different types of guitars because we, we run a lot of different types of guitars on stage. So I've started using a lot of dynamic equalization on the guitars because you know I'm going from one song that's on a Les Paul to another song that's on a Telecaster to another song that's on a, a Gretsch White Falcon. Um, so rather than trying to EQ my way around manually between every song or setting up hundreds of snapshots, I use a lot of dynamic EQ to, to try and take care of that. Um, reverb wise, I tend to use you know the TC VSS3 reverb. I find that very pleasing and very nice to use. Um, I've been sort of moving my effects to, more towards waves over the last few months. Finding the C6 very useful, the HEQ in particular, I'm really liking. And then the main vocal compressor I use is the CL1B, the TubeTech CL1B. But I try to keep it as as uncomplicated as possible. And then I looked, actually looked at the number of plugins that had migrated into my show file the other day, and I was just I was a little bit embarrassed to be honest because it's I actually ran out of DSP when I was trying to set this up yesterday. So I think it's it's time to have a word with myself. I think. Very nice. And then, you know, and then finally, uh, you know, it's like, what, uh, you know, what kind of live recording do you guys do? I mean, do you archive every show? I um, mean, as far as multi-track, do you uh, do you use the uh, the integrated recording uh, features within Venue for for DVD releases and, and things like that? Yeah, we multi-track every show. So I take um, a direct feed from from every microphone and DI that's on stage. I also have some ambient mics at front of house and on stage, and we also take a left and right desk feed so if anybody wants a quick listen we can, I can just bounce a left and right mix down to a CD and, and get it out there. I, I, I shudder to think how many terabytes of shows that we've got but there's piles and piles of disk drives somewhere in London. Um, we've done um, one full DVD shoot where we basically did all of the audio recording with the live consoles. We had a Pro Tool system at front of house and we had a Pro Tool system at the monitor console. And I sent time code and word clock between the two so that when I hit record at front of house, the one on monitor started recording as well, which was the monitor one was mainly a backup. But then the drives went from there to Abbey Road and all the recordings were mixed down in Abbey Road. And that was released last year, I think. Uh, I believe it's called We Come in Pieces. Um, so, and we've done a lot of um, B-sides, bonus tracks. We did an EP that we had about four or five live tracks on all that was basically done with the recordings from the Pro Tools, uh, the Pro Tools equipment that we've been touring. Um, so it works both ways. It means I can do the virtual sound check. I can use the show from last night to sound check the show for the next day. The guys love that because they don't have to come in and sound check. I love that because I actually get to hear what it sounds like before the audience which is always a bonus. It's nothing, you know, it does a lot for the stress levels when you know what your kick drum's gonna sound like before the, the audience know. Um, so, you know, that was really one of the big, um, the big plus points for, um, for us moving to venue was to be able to offer the management and the band this huge archive of multi-track. And I think one great example of this was about a year after we'd finished a tour, I had a phone call from production company in Denmark that were uh, producing a film based on Roskilde, the Roskilde Festival. And they wanted to use a track that Placebo had performed at the Roskilde Festival and they phoned me up asking if I had any desk recordings and I said, well I can do better than that guys, I've actually got 65 tracks of multi-track. And we're like, no. It's like, yeah, I've got an entire multi-track. So basically in four days I managed to mix a multi-track into uh, 5.1 stems 
send it across using digi delivery. They mastered it and it was ready to go in less than a week. Really kind of, you know, good example of, of how it worked out for us. Very cool. Well, Ian, thank you so much. Ian Pleasure. Nelson. And here. Pleasure to meet you. All right, thanks so much.